Hello, I'm Ed. Today we're going to talk about DSA, dynamic search ads. Are they any good? When to use them, when not to use them, and a few uh, best practices on how to set them up to get the most out of them. Come on. DSA. Okay, let's start with will DSA work for you? Will it work for me? Uh, first thing is to run your website or the, the landing page or the product page, whatever it may be, through the keyword planner. And then you are to review the keywords. Really simple. Do they look relevant? And are the high volume keywords uh, really relevant as well? The second way is to look at your search console data and just see what outlying uh, impressions you get on search terms. So again, are they relevant? Is it is it thin? If this data looks really thin and the search terms are really narrow, then it's, it's likely that you're gonna have a problem with DSA. And then conversely, if they're really wide and there's those are high impression keywords there, it doesn't matter if you rank for them in the in Search Console. It's if that you have impressions for them, and if they if they don't look relevant and they're they're high impressions, then there's a potential there that DSA might eat through your budget. So this is where controlling keywords, uh, negative keywords, becomes a priority. So. Assuming that you have a decent set of keywords, you run yourself through the keyword planner and it looks legit and search console looks legit and you don't have any red flags, then the first thing you want to do is set up a DSA RLSA campaign. So a remarketing DSA campaign. It's literally easy street. I've talked about this for years. Yeah, so all you do with uh, DSA is add your remarketing audience and that's pretty much it with your bidding strategy. So DSA really likes smart bidding. It's because broads seem to really like smart bidding as well. So uh, it's it does seem that DSA performs a lot better and more consistently uh, with smart bidding or automated bidding instead of manual. Ignoring the DSA RLSA now. So let's go to uh, a standard campaign. So a DSA campaign or a DSA ad group. So do we put them in a dedicated DSA campaign or do we have um, DSA ad groups as Google would recommend inside uh, like-minded campaign? So the argument for uh, DSA in a, a dedicated campaign is that you have total budget control over them. and this is because some people say that DSA gobbles budget and it overspends. My argument would be that that's because your negative keywords uh, aren't strong enough, you haven't got enough, or that you aren't uh, excluding your exact matches. So you want to take all your active exact match keywords and negative them against your DSA ad groups or your DSA campaign. Reason being, you don't want to compete with the rest of your account. So you, the assumption is that if you've got an exact match keyword, it's a known good keyword, and therefore you want it to work. So you don't want DSA to uh, be trying to gobble up your known good keywords. This is true of brand as well. So you always exclude brand from DSA ad groups or campaigns. So DSA in a campaign or DSA in an ad group? Well, I would argue it doesn't really matter. DSA is supposedly incremental because of machine learning. If you have DSA inside ad groups, inside a related campaign, so a like-minded campaign. Simple way to look at it, uh, let's say we've got cars and bikes. Well, you've got a campaign for cars, campaign for bikes. You'd, you'd put your DSA ad group targeting a cars landing page in the cars campaign. That's what I mean by a like-minded or related um, DSA ad group to the campaign level. Okay, so DSA like smart bidding, um, exclude your exacts against your DSA ad group or campaign. Uh, so when should you not be using DSA? So if you have budget constraints or issues, then don't use DSA essentially. You need to refine what you've already got. If you're using DSA and you're starting to see um, budget issues, then that would suggest, so let's say you put DSA in an ad group inside a campaign and that DSA ad group is burning the budget. That would tell me that you've got an inefficiency. So you either haven't uh, applied negatives correctly or your keyword selection is too thin, too narrow and DSA is collecting such a wide 
wide market. If you struggle to get that to work, then you, you will have to move your DSA to another campaign. Um, but essentially, you can overcome this budget issue with more keywords, more negatives to control the DSA. And then finally, e-commerce uh, advertisers, simple tip, take your less popular products and create DSA ad groups for them. So category page, subcategory page, or, or even a, uh, a brand page for specific products that you may sell. And you can create a campaign that's dedicated to your, say, bottom third of products and, and let DSA do the hard work for you. It's really effective, actually. We use that tactic all the time. The stuff that gets less love, and let's face it, if you've got hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of products, it's nigh on impossible to, for a, a, a paper, you know, for someone who's managing this to do a efficient job. You need a whole team of people trying to keep on top of that scale. And DSA just allows you to cheat a little bit and get decent performance across these. So get the machine to do the work on those um, less important areas of the account. So DSA is a good thing. It helps you scale, it helps you uh, get results, and it helps you find search queries and keyword potential that you wouldn't otherwise know. But it's not for everyone. Let's face it, it doesn't always work. I hope that's helpful. I'm going to shut up now, and thanks for listening. DSA.